Hi, this is Josh Engabretson from Thunder Beast Games with another Atomic Game Engine video. This week we've got 2D platformer physics, a new 2D lighting system with real-time shadows, a look at some content creation tools, new JavaScript IDE features, and Atomic gets a website. So let's get started. Okay, so we're in the Atomic Editor, and I have the physics platformer open. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. So what we have here is a platformer. It does have physics. Um, another neat thing we've got going on is a uh, infinite light source, which would be the sun. And that's casting shadows throughout the scene. Uh, we have some swinging vines. We have rope physics. And we also have some falling coins, which are kind of fun. And I can go ahead and do this. Um, another neat thing we can do is we can zoom out and we kind of see what's going on. I can also zoom way in. And yeah, I can zoom back out. So this is all looking good. We like it. And uh, let's have another look at it. This time, let's try it at night. So what I'll do, open up this script here, and instead of having daytime be true, we'll have daytime be false. So now, uh, instead of an infinite point, or an infinite directional light, I have a point light, which is attached to the character. Um, I could attach it to anything, but in this case the character is pretty good. So we have it uh, casting shadows across the scene, and uh, we also have lights attached to all the coins, so it's quite high performance. And uh, it's looking good. So another neat thing we can do here, uh, and this was invaluable in getting this working, I'm going to switch back to daytime, was uh, enabling the drawing of the debug physics. And uh, so now you can actually see the physics in the level. And uh, without this, you're just really guessing. And uh, that can make things very difficult, especially when you're talking about getting constraints right for things like this rope. Um, so that's a nice feature. And uh, so we will be releasing the full source code to this example. Um, it will be part of a number of examples. Uh, and we're gonna be making some more improvements to this, but um, it's looking good and we're quite happy with it. Uh, next up, what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at some of the content creation tools that were used to create this example. Okay, this is probably familiar. Um, this is the tiled level editor. This is a great way of laying out 2D levels, and so we used it for the example. Um, if I look, I have a number of different layers here. Uh, I've got some entities like coins and uh, bat spawn points and platform locations for where they go. Um, and then there's a, just the graphics. This also has a collision layer and things. I'm not gonna go into great detail here. Uh, one thing I do wanna show is that if I do select the physics layer, and then I go ahead and uh, I can just drag out some boxes, uh, like so. And if I go ahead and save the scene, I can pop over to the Atomic Editor and I can hit play, and now we actually have boxes there. And just to show that that's working as expected, I can undo that, I can do save again, go back to the Atomic Editor, hit play, and the boxes are gone. So very, very smooth editing. Um, and yeah, I would definitely look at this. We're considering forking this just for even tighter integration. I'm not sure if we'll do that, um, probably down the road. Uh, otherwise, the other thing I wanted to mention, there are other tools, but this is this one is especially cool as well. Uh, this is called Spriter, and basically it allows you to lay out um, animated characters uh, using like bones and things. Um, so you can do all kinds of different like switch outs of, of outfits, and you get really smooth animation this way. Um, I actually am using sprite frames in the example, so uh, it's just like a 10 frame sequence. Uh, we will probably be switching over the example to use a bone system though because they are just much nicer anyway so there's spriter and i did lay out the animation with spriter and then bake it out with texture packer that's another great tool uh, to a sprite sheet so everything here is very mobile friendly and um and just kind of ready to go so all these source assets will also be the example so there's a look at spriter and tile both of which are oh Tiled is open source and free to download. Spriter is a very inexpensive uh, purchase, so you can look at those as well. Um, and up next, we're going to look at some of the JavaScript IDE improvements and the latest build of Atomic.
Okay, very quickly, before we look at the new JavaScript IDE features, let's do a uh, WebGL and mobile uh, deployment for the platformer. So let's go ahead and go out to WebGL. And here we are, we're running the platformer in the browser. Uh, the lighting's working, the physics is working. Uh, this is all the same scripts, all the same art assets from the desktop version. Uh, performance is good. And uh, with all this web stuff, it is all pretty new, so it will continue to get better. Um, but yes, it is running and uh, you could do that today. You could ship a game. Uh, so next up we have the Android deployment. This is running on an NVIDIA Shield, which is a Tegra 4. Uh, once again, it's running great and uh, we're very happy about that. So when we do ex uh, develop examples and just during the course of normal development, we do make sure that the uh, engine is continuing to run on the various deployment platforms as that's very important. Uh, so next up, let's look at the new JavaScript IDE features. Okay, so I'm back in the Atomic Editor, and I have my CoinJS open. Uh, this is the JavaScript component that is for the coins. Um, I just want to highlight a couple of the new IDE features. And one of those is that we have much better error reporting. So if I go ahead and make an obvious syntax error, and I hit save, I immediately get told that um, on line uh, 50 of my CoinJS, I've got a problem, and I can navigate to that. If I happen to have another file open, it will automatically navigate to where the error is. Let me undo that. And when I hit save, what's going to happen is it knows the error is gone, so the, uh, the message goes away. Um, another thing we have is we have uh, some runtime reporting. So let me make an obvious error here. And by obvious, I mean not so. <laughs> uh, so node AA is going to be undefined. And this is happening inside the physics uh, contact for the coin. So when the coin touches something, we should get an error now. And the coin drops, and we hit something, and we do. We get an unidentified uh, node AA and uh, coin JS. So I go ahead and fix that now, too. OK. Um, another thing we have is we've got find. So I can go ahead and find for node, and I can find forward, and I can find back. And the last thing I want to show for this week is that we have uh, automatic code beautifying. So if I go ahead and screw up the formatting on this a bit and just kind of mess it up, um, and then I go ahead and uh, hit Command-B, it's going to format the document for me. So it's all back to being lovely formatted JavaScript, which is handy. So that's what we have for this week on the JavaScript IDE. Um, next up, I just want to talk a little bit about the new Atomic Game Engine website. Okay, so one last thing. Uh, the Atomic Game Engine now has a website, which is available at www.atomicgameengine.com. Um, and you can sign up for the newsletter there. You can also find out about our Twitter information. Um, let me just kind of messing around, trying to multitask here. And uh, yeah, so uh, we are planning on releasing this in 2015 and we'll have a firmer date as development continues. So that information will also be available on the website. Um, and uh, yeah, please do sign up for the newsletter. We won't spam you, I promise. Uh, so until later, this is Josh Engelbretson from Thunderbeast Games.